Great. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am Nataka Nithiapat from Gesaisat University, Bangkok, Thailand. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Kyoto University for the kind invitation <coughs> to participate in this workshop. Um, at Gesaisat University in Bangkok, um, we are one of the top five universities in Thailand. We are the biggest university in Thailand in terms of number of students. We've got about uh, 50,000 students and uh, we've got four campuses around the country. The main campus is in Bangkok. So if you have never been to Bangkok and visited Kasestad University, you are very welcome to visit us. Okay. Now, um, I am working as an assistant to the President for Academic Affairs and uh, one of my responsibility is to look after all of these academic affairs that, is, um, that are related to international matters. So as an administrator, I think that promoting collaboration in research can be rather similar to matchmaking prior to an arranged marriage. If you, are, if you are going to try to match two people or more than two who have never known each other before to do research together. And to make this marriage work, it requires developing of mutual trust between the two partners. I'm not very sure if this is my own opinion or typical Thai opinion because I was in one of the workshops which is similar to this one but it was a workshop talking about technology transfer and the Thai participants were talking about trust. Trust is the big uh, major barrier to prevent the success in technology transfer and perhaps for research collaboration as well. But um, our participants from European Union or you know, Europe countries, they didn't think that at all. They didn't see that trust is the, the biggest problem. But anyway, so to, to make the research collaboration work, the easiest way normally is rely on the personal contact between researchers and that will bring successful research collaboration. But if your researchers in your institutions are not those people who are outgoing, if they are those people who like to stay in the labs or offices just doing their research, do not like to go out and meet new people like uh, participating in international conferences or anything like that, it will be difficult to expand the collaboration to new partners, never mind the existing one. So there must be other ways that uh, at the university levels to try to help this kind of collaboration. At Gesellschaft University, one of the methods that we are doing now is to match making at the institutional level using double degree programs, double degree programs that is related to research programs as a tool to initiate the personal contact between researchers and hopefully that will bring uh, about the successful in research collaboration. So for the next, about next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk about the benefits uh, from initiating this kind of research collaboration through the double degree programs and the problems that we had to overcome using the double degree program with the Graduate School of Agriculture at Kyoto University as a case study. So before I start with the benefits and the problems, let me give you a little bit of the background information of the project. We first um, started talking about this program in about late 2013 
and we have come to the conclusion of signing an agreement in March last year. This program is a double master's degree program. It involved 11 master's degree programs from Garcesa University and one master's degree in agricultural science offered by the Graduate School of Agriculture at Kyoto University. What this means is that the students that participate in this program at the end, when they complete the program, they will get one of the 11 master's degree from Gazeta University and one master degree in agricultural science from Kyoto University. When we first started the talk uh, in late 2013, um, we only had four degrees programs at Gazeta University that were interested to join this project. And then during the, the period of developing the agreement, we managed to convince more programs to involve, so the number came up to eight. And then at the last minute, probably about one or two weeks before the signing of the agreement, we have managed to increase the number to 11 programs. And the why from Kyoto University, there's only one program. It is just a different uh, education system, but they involved a lot of uh, departments within the Graduate School of Agriculture. So why we could um, increase the number from four to 11 at the end, it's because we managed to convey these benefits to our, our faculties in the universities. The first um, benefit is for students. Um, of course, the students will have the overseas research experience. They can improve their English. Although both Thailand and Japan are not the native English speaking countries, but we've got to use English to communicate anyway. The students will finally have two degree diplomas which will, of course, make them more attractive to employers. And because of the previous, those previous benefits, like the overseas research experience, the better English in, you know, in communication, because of they have two degree diplomas, that will make them to have a wider range of uh, job prospects. So these are the benefits for the students. And for the teaching department that involved in this program, um, they will, it will make the program that they are offering more attractive. And that will not just only in terms of number of students, but also for the quality of incoming students as well. Um, in Thailand at the moment, in postgraduate level, especially in the PO science subjects, the number of uh, applications for the postgraduate degree is decreasing continuously. A lot of programs are now struggling to, to be in operation because of the number of students at the moment. I don't know if this happens in your countries or not, but this is the situation that we are facing now in Thailand. And that is mainly because the number of students studying in science at the school level is decreasing. Now, so if the department decide to join this program, that will make the program more attractive. And then, of course, that will increase research cooperation, which is actually the main benefit that the university would like to have by using this kind of double degree program and will hopefully increase the quality of teaching and research as well. And of course, this will make the, uh, the department more recognized from the worldwide academic community. And the benefits that the university will get is, of course, enhancing the reputation of the university. And this is one of the key factors that is used by those university ranking systems, so it's quite important. 
it will make the university known throughout the world and it will also make the university recognized by governmental and other funding bodies. So what we are doing is that we first more or less sign up this agreement at the institutional level and then we promote this program to our uh, the faculties in the universities and then this will hopefully kind of like push our researchers to try to find more collaboration and do research together through this kind of program. But of course there are a lot of problems. I just say it in general that the main problem is this kind of different rules and academic regulations. And it would be probably the main problems that why a lot of our faculties um, are kind of like hesitating to join the program. And then you also have to persuade the teaching department to participate. And then this is the kind of like most difficult part is to match course contents for credit transfer. You've probably heard a lot of speakers talking about that this morning. And yes, it is the main problems with this kind of program. And even although if you have overcome those three problems, then at last you still have another problem is trying to persuade academic research supervisors to participate and also students to participate in the program as well. So, so far, um, we have overcome these problems quite well. Not all have been solved, but we have managed to do a lot of it. And then um, why could we do that is in general because we are optimistic and we have this so-called flexible outlook. We think that everything can be done. Okay. <laughs> and we are quite fortunate to have dedicated and hardworking coordinators. You involve, we involve 11 programs from nine faculties. So each program would have their own coordinators. And the main, uh, the university have got to have a main coordinators as well to coordinate all of these faculties in this program. And of course, our coordinator from Kyoto University also have to do a lot of hard work as well. And then um, one of the coordinators also from the international office because this involved this kind of like agreements between the two universities. So it involved a lot of people and we need, you need hard working people to do that. And all of these wouldn't come to any success at all if there were no lots of talking, debates and discussion. Our dean of the graduate school had a lot of debates and discussion to try to change several rules and regulations in order to make this program happen. So, finally, we have managed to sign the agreement. The agreement was signed in March last year, so it's about 11 months have passed. We signed with the 11 degrees program and after the signing of the agreement, of course, within our university, there are uh, some internal process to complete this program so that the program can start running and take the students into the program. At the moment, we have managed to have three programs completed the process. And we now have two students <laughs> joining the program and they will come to start their study in Kyoto University later on this year. And um, of course, so I think it is quite, quite good in the way that you know, after 11 months, we now manage to have two students and it, they're going to start this year. And we hope that uh, in the future, we'll have more students. And of course, not only that, we hope that these babies will grow up we hope that they will manage to finish the program and have the successful life you know, in their jobs. And of course, that will bring all those benefits that I have already talked about to the university and to the 
department that offer these programs as well. So I think that is all for me now. Thank you very much. <laughs>